my skin, <laughs> my skin is so confused right now. I am breaking out hardcore across my chin, like really painful blemishes. And then I've got this rough texture on my forehead and I've got this redness. And if I open my mouth too wide, then the corners of my mouth split and bleed. <laughs> so that's what I'm dealing with right now. And I thought maybe today we could do a little bit of like a get ready with me shit skin day edition. Step number one. Just like that. Step number two, I'm going to defuzz my upper lip and my unibrow because I'm feeling a little overgrown. All right, before I go on to makeup, I'm just gonna add the tiniest bit of this Dermalogica Skin Hydrating Mask on my chin and mouth area. So I've got a whole bunch of these leftover dry flaky patches from blemishes. And if you try to put concealer straight on them, it looks so awkward. <laughs> They're like the concealer catches and draws attention to the texture. So a little bit of a hydrating mask. It helps the concealer to sit a bit better. I've switched up the order in which I apply my products and it's going to become obvious a little bit later on. I'm going to take the Too Faced Born This Way concealer, loving this, loving this so much. And I am going to conceal my blemishes first. So just taking a bit on my finger and why are shit skin? Why are shit skin why a uh, shit skin 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 so now that i've got these little patches all over my face i'm just going to dab really lightly on the concealer i don't want to shift the concealer off the blemish itself i just want to blend the edges a little bit i use a different shade of the Too faced born this way under the eyes i really enjoy this concealer i think it's like tart shape tape um, in a lot of ways, but it's a little bit more pliable and creamy. It's just a little bit easier to blend out and it doesn't look quite as dry. The only thing I don't love is the shade range. I sat at the counter for like half an hour trying to figure out what shade I wanted to buy and I bought a cream puff and almond and I don't think either of them are right. <laughs> Now I'm going to move on to my foundation and obviously I'm using the Armani to go essence in foundation cushion have been raving about it for years. So when I go to put on this foundation, I'm going to be really careful not to uh, disturb the concealer underneath. So I just kind of roll and pat the foundation onto the skin. And I find that doing it in this order means that the edges of the concealer are really well blended into the foundation. If you tend to use like a buffing brush um, to really buff in your foundation, then I would recommend the more traditional sequence of foundation first, concealer second. But if you're someone who likes beauty blenders or cushion foundations, maybe try doing your spot concealing beforehand. Give it a go, see how you like it. In the spirit of laziness, I get my cushion puff and I just buff it underneath my brow just to kind of dull down any purpley, purpley veins. So when I've got this sort of like bumpy congestion on my forehead, I want to powder that area because powdered surfaces look smoother, right? It's like an optical illusion, but I don't want to use just any powder because some powders can look kind of cakey and heavy. So one of my favorite lightweight, super skin-like powders is the By Terry Tinted Hydra Powder. I'm just going to take the tiniest amount, tiniest amount, roll and dab that here. I'm also gonna roll and dab some powder on these eruptions, the volcanoes, and just a little dusting into my eyes for that concealer. So if I'm having a bit of a shit skin day slash week slash month, then I will typically reach for like powder bronzers and powder blushes because I've just gone ahead and concealed all these blemishes. If I go to put a cream bronzer on top of that, I shift everything. It's just too, it's too hard. It's too hard for me. So I really like these palettes from Hourglass. Hourglass, oh, kills it. Kills it with their powder formulations. So I'm gonna take a bit of the bronzer. And the thing that I like about these palettes is I can kind of mix. So I'm gonna mix it with a bit of the face powder to get an extra sheer bronzer. And again, just lightly patting that so I don't shift any of that concealer. So yeah, if I was summarizing this video, <laughs> the too long didn't read version is pat, don't swipe. That's it. For blush, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mix a bit of the blush with a bit of that powder so I get an extra sheer blush formula. More than ever, I just want everything to be really sheer and blendable and no edges. Just a little bit of that highlight on the tops of the cheekbones. 
I would avoid putting this highlight for me like anywhere on the forehead or where I've got some texture, textual issues going on because it sparkly and shiny things, they just draw attention to, to any lumps and bumps on the skin. Now more than ever, I think is a great time to shop your stash. You guys know I'm a big believer in shop your stash. May I suggest Woodwinked? MAC Woodwinked. This is like the ultimate classic one and done eyeshadow. You pop it all over the lid and buff it into the crease and it, it's one of those mystical unicorns that looks like you're wearing three or four different colors but it's just the one. This brush is a little bit damp uh, with a setting spray and I tend to apply most of my shimmery shadows with a, a damp brush nowadays, not because I want like epic full on payoff, but because it just limits the amount of uh, fallout that I get. So if I've done my base and I don't want to ruin my base, I'll just apply with a damp brush. And on the lower lash line too, all across. I need you guys to give me some recommendations for, um, for Netflix. <laughs> so I watched um, Night on Earth, so good. Oh my gosh, deep sea in the middle of the night, who knew? Uh, also, I watched a whole bunch of The Office, classic. And um, now, right now, I'm watching Tiger King. If you haven't watched it, it is the greatest ensemble of absurdity I have ever seen in my entire life. The entire time, I'm just like, what? But yeah, if you have any Netflix recommendations, please leave them for us in the comment section down below so that everyone can have a read and be better informed. <laughs> and just for a little bit of light in that inner corner, I'm going to take some of those highlighting shades and just lightly press. Um, also, I forgot to tell you guys what I've been doing to treat all of this. So for the painful under the skin blemishes on my chin, I've been using the um, Skin Iceland blemish dots and also the uh, zit sticker um, stickers. Both of these are really great. I do find that they kind of help to ease the inflammation of, of blemishes. And also if you've got a sticker on a blemish, you can't pick at it. It's genius. For my lips, I've been using the Bite Agave Lip Mask. I've gone through so many of these. It is incredible for really traumatized lips. Um, so I put a thick layer of that in the morning and in the evening, and it is helping. I think actually what happened with the sides of my mouth was I was using this paste that my dentist gave me to remineralize my teeth and it gave me some sort of eczema. I had some sort of contact dermatitis from it. But anyway, no one, no one cares about your lips, Karima. Okay, back to the eyes. I'm going to curl my lashes. I have found the best mascara. I've been obsessing of this product for weeks. And the best part of this is it's from the drugstore. This is the L'Oreal Telescopic Extra Black. I know you're saying, dude, we know it's awesome. This has been a cult product for years. I had never tried it. I'd always, it was always kind of in the back of my brain. Like, oh, I've got to try that L'Oreal mascara that everyone talks about. And I picked it up. So it's like super uh, lengthening and separating. Typically I go for volumizing mascaras, but now I've realized maybe I don't like volumizing mascaras. Maybe I prefer separating formulas. So before, after, before, after. And I'm happy to report that this mascara lasted through a very sweaty booty workout that I did on my bedroom floor the other day. So yeah, mate, mate telescopic winner, go buy that. For brows, I'm still very much on the um, Hourglass volumizing brow gel. So I just like brush all my hairs directly up and sometimes I even go back and forth and tease them a little bit to get that really fluffy texture. And then for lips, TBH, it's been kind of tricky with this lip eczema that I've got going on. But I wanted to show you guys another winner that I found at the drugstore. This is the Maybelline Color Sensational Shaping Lip Liner. This reminds me in formula to so many of my high-end nude lip pencils in that it's really creamy upon application, but then it sets somewhat, but it doesn't set so bulletproof that it starts to like flake off or do any weird textural things. It's just a really awesome formula. And this color is like the perfect blush nude. And then another lip product that I have fallen head over heels in love with, the Revlon Kiss Glow Lip Oil. I can use this even when my lips are at their worst because <laughs> it's just a really uh, nourishing, sheer, balmy lip oil that makes the lips look really nice and glossy. 
So there you go, that's actually a very typical face for me. You could wear this look to a multitude of places. For example, uh, you could wear it while social distancing, you could wear it while social isolating on the couch, you could wear it while walking around the block if that is permitted in your country, and that's about it. <laughs> Those are your options. Uh, in all seriousness, I, I hope that you guys are all staying safe in this very confusing period. Uh, if you would like to see a little bit more of my face, then come say hello to me on Instagram at Kareem and McKimmy. Also, tell me in the comment section down below what you'd like to see from me next, now that I have a little bit of extra time to film. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I shall speak to you all very soon. Bye! Bye-bye!